In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the BenQ SW270C photography monitor. Hello, my name is Stuart Wood and welcome to this video. In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the BenQ SW270C professional photography monitor. First of all, I'm going to just go over the specs very quickly and then I'm going to give you my likes and dislikes with using these monitors for the past month. Now, full disclosure, BenQ did supply me with these two monitors for this review. So the monitors are a 27 inch monitor. They are a 2K display. They have a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and they are an IPS panel. The viewing angles are great on these monitors. I mean, I can move around and I can still see them specifically going from my old 24 inch monitors where you have to be right in front of the monitor to see them clearly these are great on the viewing angles now the stand you can move the stand up down tilt it you can even go into a portrait mode with the stand now i opted to remove the stands and go for a visa mount for these since i have the two of them on a visa mount single stand arm it just saves space and in my opinion just looks better they are a hardware calibrated display which means all of the calibration from when you do a custom calibration is stored within the monitor itself they do come out the factory calibrated however as we saw in a previous video you do need to calibrate them when it comes to the uh, the calibration if your software is working it goes through very smoothly. They can display out the factory 99% of the Adobe RGB color space. However, I have found if you do a custom calibration, you can get that to 100 or more. They support 100% sRGB and 97% P3 for those video editors out there. The monitor supports 16 bit 3D LUT with 10 bit color. So for those people that love colour grading, love to play with your colours, these monitors are a perfect match for you. The monitor comes future-proofed with HDR. The HDR on this is a fantastic, it's as good as my TV downstairs. However, I have to use my Xbox One to view the HDR because HDR on Windows currently is very janky. But when Windows and Microsoft finally catches up with the rest of the world, these monitors will be future-proofed with HDR. The monitor is both Pantone and Kalman verified. The monitor comes with uniformity 2.0 and is compatible for both Mac and Windows. The monitor has two times HDMI 2.0 ports, display port 1.4, it has a built-in USB 3.1 hub and it also has a USB Type-C connector. Now this is great if you're a Mac user, you can plug in your laptop or your computer with one single cable to power and display your display from your computer. That's fantastic technology. But again, I'm using displays port so I haven't been able to test that. The monitor is equipped with an SD card reader, which is also a fantastic feature. It comes with the Puck 2.0. You can use this Puck to alter the settings. You can set your custom calibrations to the, uh, the shortcut keys on the front. I have mine set to a custom calibration of mine, uh, a Rec 709. I'm currently black and white. I am going to change the black and white over to a print version, which means you have to lower the brightness on the screen to around 80. It has a brightness of 300. Native contrast is 1000 to 1. Viewing angle, as again, as I said, the viewing angle is great on this. It's rated on their website as 178 degrees. Response time is 5 milliseconds with a refresh rate of 60. It's got an aspect ratio of 16 to 9 with 1.07 billion colours. This monitor is in their photography section. It's aimed towards photographers. They do have the monitors for videos, but I'm using it for both video and photography. And at the moment, I'm loving it. If you want to see the full specs, then check in the description below for a link to their website. It has a breakdown of all the specs. So if you are buying it, do double check all the specs to make sure it does do what you want it to do. So now we've got the specs out of the way, let's deal with the likes and dislikes. Let's start with the likes first. First of all, I love the fact that these are hardware calibrated monitors. Although I've only had them a month, I haven't found anything that's thrown out the calibration. When I use software calibration, it used to get thrown out quite easily, particularly with driver updates. But so far, I'm okay. I will update you in future videos if the calibration does get thrown out because again, I've only had them a month. So, you know, I really need them for about six months to test the, uh, the theory that hardware calibration holds longer than software and it's more accurate. But what I can tell you is it's the first time I've had two monitors that have the exact same colors on both monitors, which for me, that was driving me up the wall with my old setup. 
the one had a magenta hue. Um, no matter how many times I calibrate them, it just would not remove that, and they would look different on both displays. Such as if you move your um, your website, whatever you're looking at, back and forward, or leave it in between, you could see that it was different. Whereas on these, it's exactly the same, and that for me and my OCD is fantastic. Another thing I love is the shading hood. Again, as anybody who's viewed my channel knows, I have spiders and mantises up here that we use as pets we use them for modeling and testing out new lighting setups for macro photography and there is a spill that comes down from the top of here onto the monitors but with these shading hoods it blocks out all of that which is fantastic these monitors have a built-in sd card reader which is fantastic it's usb 3.0 so it's faster than my old card reader they also have two usb 3.1 connectors as well you can visa mount these as you can see here i have them visa mounted on one single display stand which looks fantastic i love it i mostly love these monitors for my video editing again when i'm doing photoshop or lightroom mostly it's on the one display but with video editing i have my timeline on here and the full screen output on this monitor and it's fantastic i'm really loving these monitors so let's get on to the dislikes about this monitor. So I'm going to start off with the worst thing that I hate about these monitors, and that is the backlight bleed on these monitors is bad. The corners, particularly the top left-hand corner, is just very bright. If you're viewing content that's in a cinematic widescreen, which is like my little worlds, you can see the backlight bleed is very bad with these monitors, which I'm very surprised with being BenQ monitors. I didn't expect backlight bleed that bad. So the shades, I absolutely love the shades, as I've said before. However, the hole where you can put a color calibration uh, display tool down, okay, is just not big enough to put a display calibration in it. So if BenQ are watching this video, just make this hole here just a little bit bigger so you can actually use it. So far, I mean, I've been taking this part of the, uh, the shade off to do the calibration. I have been told that you're supposed to, that you, well, you can take this off, but it feels like I'm going to break it. So I'm not going to do that because I don't want to break the shade. But that is something that does need improving. You need to make this hole just basically, let's say, twice the size of what it is currently so that you can fit a calibration tool in there without having to take off the hood. So the next thing that I don't like is the SD card reader and the USB hub. I know I had it on my likes. I like the fact it's got an SD card reader. What I don't like is it on the back of the monitor. BenQ, please put your SD card reader on the USB port on the front or underneath. I don't mind having a little bit bigger bezel to get easy access to the SD card reader. As it is at the moment, I have to go round the back of the monitor to plug in my SD card. And that always moves the monitor. So I'm, I'm having to sit here and reframe my monitors again it's very irritating that they put the ports on the back of the monitor put it on the side or the front of the monitor so overall i'm very impressed with these benq monitors the size is great the color accuracy is fantastic again having both the same calibrated display is just my ocd just thanks benq for that it's by itself um would i have bought these again yes i would have bought them because again it was on my wish list to buy them it was just going to be next year so who is this monitor for this monitor is for any working professional that needs good accurate colors so if you're delivering to clients uh, prints or images if you're doing any type of video output uh, even if it's on youtube you need accurate colors when I'm doing my macro adventures, I want accurate colors. That's it for this review. Again, links in the description for these monitors. Go check them out. Check out the full specifications if you wish to. So what do you think of the BenQ SW270C monitor? Are you thinking of buying one? If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below and I will answer them for you. What I can say is it has been a big step up from my old 24 inch gaming monitors to these 27 inch professional photography monitors. I can certainly tell the difference when I'm editing. I want to thank BenQ for sending these monitors over for review. They're going to come in very handy for the next year of Macro Adventures and I have another series I'm working on which is going to be very exciting. But that's it for this particular review. My name's Stuart Wood, I want to thank you for getting to the end of this review, and I'll see you in the next video. Let me jump cuts. Anyway. Oh,
Fruit fly got out. Okay. The monsters both Pantone and Kalman Valbated. But the Pantone, Pantone, Pantone. Maybe I should just put those there. It supports picture in picture as well, which is very useful. Sometimes. Not actually that useful. This monitor is in their photography section. It's aimed get on the back of here we have a USB card reader. It's an SD card reader. And we have USB don't know what I'm doing that for. I did struggle doing the um the um hmm. Then what is irritating when you shut down your computer? This light here keeps blinking. But ah, it's just nitpicking. Don't need any review.